So you want to study the parables. As someone who has studied and taught seminary courses on the parables for the past 30 years, my heart is a little warmed to hear this. So without much more, let me give you a list of some of the books that I recommend for anyone studying the parables. And I also require my students to buy most of these. I'll put links to all these books in the description under this video with links to where you can pick up a copy for yourself if you're interested. And by way of disclaimer, I'm not making any money off recommending any of these books. No money has changed hands. However, I always recommend that you check with your local library first as they may have them or can get them in as interlibrary loan for you, saving you a ton of hard earned cash. I'm going to start with books that cover the broadest ground first and then get into more specific studies or unique studies towards the end of this video. And one I hope really surprises you. It's a really fun book and I recommend it and I've saved it for the last book. So stick around to the end. The first book I'm going to recommend is written by David Gower. It's in the What Are They Saying About series and this one is What Are They Saying About the Parables? This short book surveys the scholarly research done on the parables over the past hundred or so years. Because research and how we interpret the parables has really exploded since 1900, this is a great book to help you know how and why different people interpret the parables the way they do today. He starts with the rise of the historical method being applied to the parables and then shifts to literary approaches, the parables in their Jewish context, and advances in how similes, symbols, and metaphors work. Once again, all the books I mentioned in this video, I will have a link to underneath the video so you can pick it up yourself, or maybe for a family member, someone studying theology, or perhaps clergy at your church who you're really not sure about when they interpret the parables. Commentaries. Let me take a moment to explain what a commentary is in case you're not familiar with that term. A commentary is a book that serves as an explanation of the biblical text by covering topics like historical background, literary features, linguistic features in the text, or Greek or Hebrew words. They can range in depth from commentaries that are written for more of a devotional approach. Warren Wearsby or J. Vernon McGee's commentaries would fall into this category. Very technical commentaries might require a knowledge of Greek or Hebrew or other languages as well and commentaries can fall within a very broad spectrum within that range. Devotional level commentaries are good for personal reflection, but really won't take you very far in your studies. The commentaries I'm going to recommend dig a lot deeper, but don't require a special knowledge of biblical languages or history to use them. The first two commentaries I'm going to recommend are about equal in my mind. In fact, some years I require one for my class and the next year I go for the other. They're both excellent. First up is Arlen Holkren's The Parables of Jesus, a Commentary. It was written in 2000. When Holkren interprets one of the parables, he gives his own translation first. Then he shifts into interpreting the parable and then he gives what he sees as the significance of this parable for us today. He groups the parables together according to how he sees their main teaching coming across. So for example, parables that reveal something about God, parables that tell us how we should behave, parables about wisdom, life before God, allegorical parables, parables about judgment, or parables about the kingdom. My second recommendation is Stories with Intent by Clyde Snodgrass. And this one comes a few years after Holkren's. This is written in 2008. Now, just looking at the thickness of these two books, you can see that these commentaries are going to do a deep dive into the parables. One of the things that I like about Snodgrass's work is that he offers a broader spectrum for past and present interpretation of the parables. Both of these parables cover a great deal of the same questions. Snodgrass tends to have more on the parables in the Old Testament, Jewish writings, while Holkren gives a good discussion of the parables in the Gospel of Thomas. While both of these authors present a great deal of research on the parables, they present their work in a way that doesn't require specialized training in Greek or Hebrew or other technical areas. They are a valuable resource for general readers, churches, and to graduate level classrooms. 
A couple other commentaries I would put into this category are Interpreting the Parables by Craig Blomberg. Also, Brad Young has a commentary, The Parables, A Jewish Tradition and Christian Interpretation. If you like to question the biblical text or are looking for a different perspective or a more critical view, I would recommend Bernard Brandon Scott's book, Hear Then the Parables. Scott asks some very provocative questions about how we should read the parables. In particular, he looks at the social context in which Jesus taught his parables and how this impacts their meaning in ways that always don't follow the traditional reading of the parables, but force you to think about them. Now, if you want the Reader's Digest version of his work, he has a shorter version, Reimagine the World, an introduction to the parables of Jesus, and this is done in 2001. And finally, I would be remiss if I didn't mention the 800-pound gorilla in the room. In the middle of the 1800s, Richard Chavanaugh Trench penned Notes on the Parables of Our Lord. Now, Trench follows an allegorical approach to the parables. And if you get one of the earlier copies before they edit it out, he will discuss the Greek behind the text or perhaps Latin translations of it. It is beautifully written. I wouldn't use his work for the most up-to-date research on the parables, but it is a favorite of mine. Seminal books on the parables. Seminal books are those that really shape the twists and turns of the tradition for how we interpret the parables. These are the big thinkers who really set the agenda. Now, the book that cannot be mentioned or shown in this video because I don't have a copy and it's not available in English was published around 1900 by a German scholar named Adolf Ulicka. He published a monumental two-volume work on the parables. His main point was that the parables are not allegories as they had been interpreted for the first 1900 years of the church and that they were extended similes that taught one main central idea or point. While not everyone agrees with his ideas, almost every interpreter since Ulica has sprung from his work in one way, shape, form, or another. The following represents just a couple of the major biblical scholars that have shaped how we read the parables since Ulica. The first one is, which I cannot find my copy of, is C.H. Dodd's book, The Parables of the Kingdom, written in 1935. Dodd followed Eulica in rejecting the parables as allegories, but not much else. There is much more to the imagination and wealth of the parables than just moral precepts, as Eulica claimed. Dodd thought the parables were perhaps the most authentic aspect of Jesus' teachings in the Gospels, and that the parables are works of art, and as he wrote, they have significance beyond their original occasion. Thus, they are of practical relevance to us today, they are not just some of Jesus' teachings that have been historically preserved as artifacts from the past. The second one is Joaquin Aramaeus' book, The Parables of Jesus. Now, Aramaeus thought that Dodd restricted the meaning of the parables too much. Aramaeus argued that in the Gospels, we have two historical contexts that we need to understand when we interpret the parables. The first is the actual setting of Jesus' ministry on the Galilean countryside. The second is how the parables were preserved and taught within the early church. All of the parables, though, compel us as readers to make a decision about Jesus and his mission. Dan Otto Villa shifts from Dodd and Aramaeus' historical approach to a literary model. He felt that too much attention was given to the historical approach, which was useful but it reduced the meaning of the parables to relics in the past. He wanted to emphasize the ascetic qualities of the parables that disclose new possibilities for us as readers to understand the kingdom and to live our life of faith. One book that I really highly recommend is Garrett Von Jones' The Art and the Truth of the Parables. Jones argues that the parables have a wide variety of form and content, and as a result, we should not limit them to one model or theory. Parables speak to the whole existential nature of human experience. For example, when the prodigal son leaves his family, he finds himself in a disenchanted world in which he was not at home. It's a small story about the human situation. I think what I like most about Jones's work is the lyrical turns of phrase that he uses throughout his book. 
It is very beautifully written. If you like literary criticism type books, kind of like along the lines of Annie Dillard, then I think you would enjoy his work as well. Finally, we come to the grab bag books on the parables. These are books that really don't fit neatly into one category or may not address the parables directly, but I think are very, very useful for studying the parables. The first one is George B. Caird's book, The Language and Imagery of the Bible, published in 1980. Now, unfortunately, George B. Caird died just as his thought was maturing and leaving us wishing that he would have written more or lived longer. While this book doesn't address the parables directly, Caird looks at the different forms of language within the Bible. It can be used to inform, to help us think. It's expressive, as in the Psalms, or it can be performative. His examination of the different forms of language and literature in the Bible help us to think through and inform our approach to interpreting the parables and most other passages within the Bible as well. Great book if you can find a copy of it. Second one is Mark Turner's book, The Literary Mind. And this is one of these books that is easy to read, but very difficult to understand. Turner applies cognitive linguistics to how we understand and interpret a text. I recommend this for studying the parables because he really examines how narratives are fundamental aspects to our thought. Narratives allow us to make predictions, plan, and explain. And parables, he argues, are unique in that they are both a story, but they also involve projection. As he goes through the book, he uses the story of the vizier's daughter, Shahrazad from 1001 Arabian Nights as a case study through the book which applies well over to studying the parables. Another book that I've added to my course readings for this year is The Parables After Jesus, Their Imaginative Receptions Across Two Millennium by David Gowler, the same guy who wrote the Watsa book. In this, he has a collection of different interpretations that have been offered on the parables from the earliest church all the way down today. Now, one of the things I like best about his work is that he uses an example from artworks, from early icons all the way up to modern depictions to show how the parables have been interpreted in artworks as well, which I think is incredibly useful and often overlooked. I've saved perhaps my favorite book for the very last, Robert Martin Walker's book, Politically Correct Parables, Cautionary Tales for an Enlightened Age. Now he doesn't endorse or critique political correctness, Rather, he puts the parables into politically correct language to bring them back to life today in a very fresh and humorous way. For example, the parable of the rich fool becomes the parable of the economically advantaged but judgmentally impaired person. It brings these stories that we are so familiar with back to life in a very, very funny way. There are a ton of other great books on the parables, but these are a few of my favorites. I hope this serves as a base for you in your study of the Bibles. And you don't have to be as OCD as I am about studying them. Until I see you in the next video, I will leave you with the word of peace.